Hello, SD Filmmaker here. Now, I was going to continue my audio rehashes of my old Sears and webcomic, but I realize you guys have been waiting a long while, so rather than do that, and let's face it, the pace I'm going would take me another year or so to do them all, I decided to start doing new ones instead, but not today. Until then, I wish to do a small segment called Attack, Attack on Ambiguity. Ambiguity. It's where I take a medium with ambiguous scenes and endings and try to draw my own conclusions using the clues from said movie. Case in point, John Carpenter's a thing. If you read my seer or listened to my sir on the matter, you'd know the story by now. If not, here's a summary. An alien life form lands in Antarctica, has the ability to devour and imitate life forms it's exposed to, and the humans race around the clock to stop it, while at the same time dealing with the paranoia that follows. Now, as a rule, I'm going to use clues from that movie only. I won't use the prequels logic, nor the logic from the comic adaptations of the game, even though most of the nicknames I give to certain things were from the prequel. As of today's hour, I am going to do an in-depth analysis on who got infected, when they got infected, and how. Spoilers ahead. If you haven't watched this, then don't listen further. The first on the block is Bennings. This one's a no-brainer because it was one of the few that was seen. When McCready and Copper took the frozen split face thing back to their base. Bennings looked after it while it was in storage. Upon thawing out, the split face thing attacked and became Bennings. Unfortunately for him, he was torched before he could finish the job. The second person was Norris. He was exposed when Copper tried to defibrillate him due to the real Norris's history of heart problems. This caused Norris's torso to open into teeth and bite off Copper's arms, causing him to bleed to death. How he got infected wasn't explained. Or was it? I can tell you how and when Norris became the thing. While Bennings was the first human exposed on screen, it was Norris that was the first that was infected. If you look closely in the beginning of the film, the dog, which was revealed to be the first thing of the movie, was seen wandering around the outpost and walks right into a room where a man's shadow is shown in the wall. The shadow has a head with a flat top haircut and a wide diameter head. This matches Norris's head and hair, making him the first one to be infected. How? Well, speaking as someone who's been around dogs in the past, all it would take for him to be infected would be an affectionate lick, common around dogs. A regular dog's bacteria, unless carrying the rabies disease, wouldn't infect humans. But since the thing is viral in nature, all it takes is a few drops of that dog's saliva to infect poor Norris without him noticing. The third is Palmer, whom ironically was the third exposed. How he became the thing would seem obvious, as the dog could have plenty of time to get to him too. However, the dog thing didn't get to him, and I can tell you why. Palmer and Childs share the same room. If the dog thing got to Palmer, Childs would have alerted the others by now. But in case it got to them both at the same time, and Childs wouldn't be able to take any actions to alert the others, he wouldn't show up clean in the iconic blood test. So I draw to that conclusion that at some point Norris got to Palmer alone. Last but not least is Blair. He could have gotten infected in many ways, however after watching a certain scene I suspect too. The first was when he drew blood from the still normal dogs to perform his tests. This leads me to believe that upon taking the thing's cells for testing, some got on him and was slowly turning him. As shown when the blood Mac tested was able to move on its own, so odds are a cell or two could move to him. The second was when either Palmer or Norris spread paranoia about McCready's infection. One of them could have stopped by the tool shed where Blair was held and infected him. Either way, you can tell he was infected by his change of behavior. In the first instance, when he was sedated and put in the shed, he warned McCready about Clark, as well as became indifferent when they locked him, as he couldn't trust himself, let alone the others. Upon checking on him later while looking for Fuchs, McCready noticed that he was more calmer and anxious to go back inside the outpost. Now I know what you're thinking, aren't Mac and Childs infected, and while there's paranoia on the matter, however, I come to conclude that neither of them are infected, but were duped into thinking they were. 
My evidence is that when Blair shut the generator off, he never left the room and he was planning on freezing himself so he wouldn't have to move from his spot. Childs thought he saw Blair prior to the generator shut down, but got lost in the storm. Since the cold doesn't affect the thing, he could have just let him away, then went back to the outpost. As for Mac, he blew up Blair before Blair could even grab him. True ambiguity isn't about leaving it up to the viewer. It's about making the viewer think that it's up to them to decide whether or not this or that happened. As usual, debate, argue, and let me know what I missed. Stay tuned for more. And watch the skies.